this is this is this is Dude, I appreciate it. I saw that you had some uh, some a Vulture Wake uh, releases coming out. You have the new song Red, really great, love it. Um, yeah, dude, I I just I just realized, you know, just you know, because we were gonna talk, realize how much of a fan I really am of your bands and a Vulture Wake. I've been checking out recently really getting into the songs it's so like the bass player oh my god your bass player is amazing so yeah <laughs> really cool stuff really interesting punk and metal and pr pr prog i guess you could say even a little bit here and there some of the some of the time signatures get all crazy but yeah i just i'm blown away dude so uh how have you been <laughs> uh i've been good obviously the last fucking two and a half years has been a total fucking drag uh, yep, yep. You You're know, still smiling. Not just for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I try. You yeah. caught me on a good day. Good. Uh, but uh, yeah, like you know, uh, Vulture Wake. We put out that first record. Like uh, shit, I think it came out in probably '18. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe. Uh, you know, and then we we barely toured because uh, Sean and Joe. Uh, we're in fucking good riddance and lag wagon. And obviously, uh, you know, those bands are more important than a vulture wag. <laughs> so, you know, so that, re that record came out, barely toured. After like a year, we kind of had a talk with those guys. And it's like, you know, I, this obviously isn't going to work. We, uh, like, we have to be able to <laughs> tour full time. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, me and Brandon, like, really i mean joe and sean did too but i mean we were like this is good this is like real shit this is good shit we need to do this we need to tour uh because you know playing a weekend or here and there uh you know around lag wagon schedule it's not gonna do it so you know after about a year of kind of playing a handful of shows with those guys we kind of brought it up to them and they're like you're totally right we need to step out of the way. You guys need to find uh, somebody who can and wants to do it like more full time. Uh, <clears throat> so then we contacted Dave Klein and John Hernandez. Uh, they were they're they're both friends of mine. I, I think Brandon kind of knew him at the time a little bit, but uh, uh, I've known him for years. Uh, they were the rhythm section of Wretch Like Me after. Uh, 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 Livermore and uh, Jeff quit. Okay, okay. So they joined Wretch Like Me. I think they were on the, whatever that later record's called, I Am Become Death or okay. something. Perfect candidates. Yeah. And uh, so they live in the same town. They're in a band together anyway. They fucking, they've known each other forever. They know, like, they're, they're fucking locked. Uh, so we got a hold of them. Uh, they were into it. Uh, we started touring, and then, <laughs> then the world, then the fucking world shuts down. So it's like, great, okay. Uh, you know, uh, this probably this isn't an unusual scenario. I'm sure a lot of a lot of us have dealt with the same shit. Uh, and now you have a mohawk because last time I saw you, you definitely didn't have a mohawk. <laughs> I like it, by the way. How, how long has? It's I been wonder a while. how long it's been. It's it been has. A while. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's at least been i mean three, there was <laughs> three years yeah at least three years i mean of course yeah I mean, yeah yeah yeah. you know getting to know you singing in all was great uh some of my favorite records are those all you know some of your all records and oh my god pommel jeez like breaking things uh the by the way for some reason not all the all stuff is on on streaming and uh i'm like why why is that is it just me so We'll have to figure um, that out. But anyway. Yeah, that I don't know. But, and then, of course, Drag the We can talk about, <clears throat> I mean, I, I got lots of questions about little fan things. But uh, Drag the River, getting to hang out with you, you know, with my band Tumble Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you guys, that was that so was always fun. fun. So the one thing that, you know, I just noticed through listening to all, of, obviously, for many years, listening to Drag the River for many years, and now checking out A Vulture Wake, it, it, all, it all kind of, 
fits together, although they're completely different sounds, like everything's so different. Um, it really shows your versatility and your cohesiveness as a songwriter. So I don't know if you write all the songs for everything. I know you don't necessarily write every single all song, but there are songs that I hear and I'm just like, that's, that's Chad. And when you're singing it, of course, then it's, it's just you through and through. Um, I love it. Now, I don't know if I have a question in here. <laughs> I just, I was just noticing the cohesive. So my, I guess my question is, is, um, can you just not get away from, and it's nothing to get away from, but like your Greatness. voice is so, it's got a, such a character to it, right? Even if you're singing quietly or you're singing loud. Now, uh, I mean, we could go anywhere with that, but what kind of, <laughs> um, okay. Um, let me ask you, how did you get into singing? I mean, because you can do it in so many different, you know, you can sing country, you can sing punk, you can sing metal, you can go high, low. How did you get into singing? Um, flashback to, uh, to when we were 15 and 16. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I, I think I started playing guitar when I was probably about 15. Uh, you know, we, we started our first band. We have everything but a singer. And uh, and I pulled the short stick, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you were just already into music and you just started singing. Yeah. Uh, out of necessity, out of yeah. just need, needing someone. Uh, I, I mean, I sang, I guess, like in school. I mean, we, we all fucking good. You know, we, we have choir class and stuff, I guess. Where did you grow up? Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Did you like and, uh, it? Did you like it there? Uh, at the time, yeah. The time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, cool. you know, I mean, I didn't, I guess, you know, I, I was pretty comfortable being brought up. Uh, I live in a cool neighborhood. You know, my schools were cool. Uh, I didn't really know any difference, any different, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed growing up there. Um... So, you know, you sing some shit in choir. Uh, you can tell, kind of, if you're a singer. You know so, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you became a singer, but when you joined All, did you join All because you lived in Missouri? And they lived in Missouri? Or was that totally a separate thing? Because you joined after Percolator, after yes. that tour. Uh, how, did, how did that come about? Uh... Sorry if you've totally told these stories a million times. I've literally never known. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, 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 no. And it's uh, weird to ask when you're just hanging out with somebody like. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Podcast. So, get out my pen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was a huge all fan. Okay. Uh, you know, I've seen I'd seen him a couple couple times. I mean, this is you know, I mean, when I was young. Uh, I'd seen him once or twice with Dave Smalley, uh, once or twice with Scott. Uh, so they, when they just happened to move from LA to Brookfield, Missouri, which is two hours northeast of Kansas City, uh, like Bill came out to to uh, check out the houses because his I believe his dad was from there, so his okay. dad owned two houses there this is a small town like uh four thousand people i think uh like the closest actual town was like columbia missouri you know the college and like that was about an hour hour and a half away um <clears throat> so bill calls a friend of mine in kansas city who promoted who was a promoter uh you know he was my age we were both like 17 18 uh so bill like flew in he needed like a ride from the airport some shit he called this guy M my buddy called me knowing i was a huge fan so i just went along you know just to meet bill and shit yes <laughs> so so we just kind of we came we became friends like kind of right off the bat you know just through that okay uh, he he knew I was in a band uh, at the time. Uh, we had this band called Apple Tree. Uh, we had played like some barn parties and shit. 
uh, with all like in Brookfield, like they would, you know, they would just play these, you know, like little shows like out in the country. I mean, it was, was in the country. Af- was this the parties after he they moved there or before? After they moved. Okay, there. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, cool. Okay, so you were just playing shows, you know, these parties and stuff, and hanging out with those guys now and again. Yeah, we played once or twice yeah. with them. Um, so. Uh, I mean, really, we were just friends. Uh, and then whenever uh, Scott decided to leave, uh, Bill called me, asked if I wanted to try out. Of course, I did. Uh, so I was the first person to try out. Uh, and then he flew out to L.A. like for a week and tried people out. Uh, and then came back and called me, and I got the job. The price was right. The price was right. <laughs> I love it. How nervous w- were you guys? And, and was there any talk uh, between the band about like, I wonder if our fans are going to like the new singer, you know, because <laughs> this is like the third time they've replaced their singer. And that's usually a death sentence for a band. But Almost always. But I mean, so was there any talk about it? Was there a worry? Or were you like, nah, no, uh, I don't remember either. I don't remember talking about it like, you know, well, you know, obviously you sound different than Scott. I mean, there was none yeah. of that. Uh, nobody was like, well, shit, are, are they going to like? No. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just, here's the guy. And, <laughs> and like, I was, I mean, I was young and naive. I, I, I had certainly, I was thinking that. I mean, Scott was like one of my fucking favorite singers, you know? And it's like, obviously I don't sound like Scott. Right. For, right. for starters. He has a cleaner voice, and he gets really high, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is stuff I can't do. But uh, and, I, and just music wise too. I mean, it was just it. I mean, most of these songs were written before I was in the band, so I know that they were do they were going in a direction anyway. I guess uh, it wasn't you know it didn't go from like you know saves to you know. Paul, like it didn't go from like this crazy jazzy, you know, prog rock yeah. music to just rock and roll. They were already transitioning. It seemed like, in a way, I was. I mean, I heard all um, at about the same time as I heard Descendants, and and I didn't know. I didn't have an actual album of either. I had like a mixtape, you know. So mm-hmm. it, was, it wasn't even a mixtape. It was a dub tape of the album. So for me, it was. Uh, I think I uh, watch out. It was the one um, before Percolator. What was before Percolator? Uh, saves. Saves. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't Saves. It was before that even. See, I didn't have the album, so I always forget what it's called. Um, All Roy's Revenge, of course. Oh, Revenge. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Revenge was, I didn't know it was called Revenge. I'd never had a cover or anything. I'd never had song titles. So all Just I had blank tape. Was, was the songs. And to me, it was wild. I mean, I was already into punk rock, but just getting into punk. Like, it was just like I had heard so, uh, Suicidal Tendencies a bunch. I'd heard some, like, some of those staples, right? Like, mm-hmm. but All was, like, my favorite band for so, I mean, I collected every single tape. And when you joined the band, I had that thought, like, oh, this is going to be interesting. There's a new a new guy because I love Son God. of a bitch. <laughs> 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 This is going to suck. But breaking things. Oh my god. Okay. I don't I know that you don't write all the songs, but is there any songs that you wrote on breaking things? Or did you start writing after that like uh into I just wrote it? uh Pummel and Mass Nerder. No, uh there were um what did you write on breaking things if you can think? Without me doing my research, I apologize. That's cool. Uh I wrote original me such a, I mean the the album opener you wrote that's amazing dude. Like, it's uh, I just listened to that today in fact. what's what's funny is um I wrote that I wrote that for the ba- my band okay. like yeah. I I wrote that before I was even in all <laughs> it's crazy but that just goes to show like how much of a fucking all fan I was absolutely but, like that like my goal was to write songs that sounded like all you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I wrote original me. I wrote uh, stick. I wrote uh, shit. I don't remember what else is on the record. 
Shreen. Uh, Shreen's on the record, I think. Isn't that? Yeah. Shreen is on the record. Is that a Bill Stevenson song? That. That's yeah. A, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, great performance. I mean, that's that song is epic for me. Yeah. And yeah, what yeah. the hell is Shreen? I've, I've asked them this before. I've asked Bill and Stefan. But uh, I'm just a nerd when it comes to it. I'm a mass nerd. Uh, uh, I love it. But yeah, Pommel, Pommel is... What is, did you want to know what Shireen is? Oh yeah, what is it? <laughs> uh, uh, Bill's girl, lady friend at the time, her name was uh, Serena, and Serena. they called her they called her Shireen. Yes, yeah. you see, I I knew I remembered that, but it was such a like that's of course what it is. I mean, <laughs> I don't even remember. It's too too ordinary, but I I love the song. It's so amazing. Uh, Pummel, you really showcase what you can do even more like vocally you get emotional you're screaming at some of the i can't remember the exact titles of some of the songs but i just remember being insanely impressed with everything about that record not just your singing but like the songwriting long distance who wrote that is that a bill song yeah 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 oh my god that's that's a song that i probably played over and over and over like thousands of times you know just like yeah anyway it's um, beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a huge fan of all. Had all your tapes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, see, not, not, I don't know if you're the same person, but not a lot of people will admit that they are a bigger All fan than Descendants fan. And I was, am, I am, and always was. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm a bigger fan of either because I kind of discovered you guys at the same time and I didn't even know... I kind of knew it was I, the same band, but like back when I was listening to music, it was 1990, probably 1991, 92. I think Percolator came out in 92. Uh, Breaking Things came out in 93. Jeez, that's a quick yeah. turnaround. Yeah, like a 93, 94, yeah, around something. there. I mean, that's a quick turnaround if you think about <laughs> how mm -hmm. long it takes people these days to put out records. But uh, For sure. Um, yeah, I mean... Everything was happening quick, you know, quickly. But I just love those 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 albums. I was I was uh, in junior high, and I went to see All, and and it was of course it was Scott. It was the Percolator tour, and I was cemented. I mean, and I never obviously never saw Descendants until '97 when they came back. Uh, right. they their first show in Dallas, played Deep Ellum live. MXPX was playing somewhere the, the next night or something like that so we were like there a night early we went to the show it was amazing anyway so like that was my first time so all was somebody i'd seen as a kid and then descendants i of course was a fan of but i didn't even see him live until i was already doing music right and right all that. so um i think all was so inspiring just seeing seeing the music seeing the guys play that stuff and being a kid and i'd go back to junior high and be like looking around i've told the story a little bit on the podcast but I'm telling it different uh <laughs> and uh just yeah i had a sense that i was i was kind of like cooler than everybody you know even though like nobody knew who all was but there was a few people that I, that were at the show and so like we had this special bond <laughs> whatever that was maybe that was just punk rock in general right yeah yeah so uh so, uh, you know, all holds a special place in my heart. But all my friends in Bremerton, uh, Mike Moen, you know, Mike the Pike Moen that, that, that uh, you obviously have met, uh, <laughs> huge Drag the River fan, you know, and he got me into Drag the River as well as Chris Rowe from the Ataris. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Once, you know, those guys introduced me to Drag the River, I was an instant fan. I, I didn't even know who Armchair Martian was before. So, like, oh, yeah. I'm meeting John Scr Snodgrass for the first time in Drag the River. That's when I first knew who he was. But oh, wow. You, I knew okay. you from all. So it was it was a little different. But um, another m amazing band. So if anybody doubts Chad Price, you, you're batting, you know, three for three with the three bands that you've done in the last, you know, 20 years or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. How do you, uh, you know, speaking of Drag the River, <clears throat> like, a lot of songs about boozing, a lot of, you know, very inspiring to my, my band, Tumble Down, and, and we had tons of songs about drinking, and, and there's a song I think you wrote called Medicine, mm -hmm. um, and you can't find these songs very easily. You kind of have to have the CD or have to have the, you know, but um, maybe someday you'll get, get the rest up. 
But my question is, you know, do you have a modern day medicine? Is it still alcohol? Is it, you know, what keeps you going? It could be something more positive than, than that, but I'm just curious, what's changed since those days? Uh, besides everything, well, <laughs> quite a bit, quite yeah. a bit. Um, well, I haven't drank in about six years, uh, because that was going nowhere good. Yeah. Eventually it, uh, it takes you down, huh? Uh, if you're the kind of drinker that I was, am, uh, you know, I mean, I just couldn't do it. Some people can drink three beers and fucking go home. And I, I, yeah, I can you know. do that. I, <laughs> I, I had some good times with tumble down and with you guys. Oh, my oh God, yeah. We would just be up all night and you guys would drink us under the table. This is a blast. Uh, it was a blast, but I can understand how after a while it, that starts taking a toll and, and it did on us too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. we don't, I don't, I still drink, but I just don't drink nearly as much, you know, right, a, right, right. A, a much smaller <laughs> limit, uh, sure. but I can understand. So, so what, what's medicine these days? Do you, I mean, uh, I'll let you go with that. Medicine these days. Well, for one thing I can tell you, uh, with close to 100% accuracy, that weed has saved my life. <laughs> yes, sir. And tell, I us am, about it. tell us all I about am it. Not, I am not joking. How so? Uh, because, um, I mean, I was like, a, I, mean, I was a serious alcoholic. I fucking loved it. I still love it. I, <laughs> you ask, my wife fucking laughs all the time because, like, everything we see, I somehow relate it to, like, party <laughs> yeah the death of the life of the party that's one of your albums for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's one of my jazz um so it's like you know like i think that like that person that fucking drunk of uh, that character I th- it's it's always going to be in me mm-hmm. you know like uh and but i can smoke a joint and to sit here in this rocking chair, stare out the window, and I don't care about that. I don't. <laughs> I don't have to fucking go out to the bar and yeah. see who's out. Yeah. I, you know, I it it just doesn't matter. Like, I could just relax here and do this, and you know, eat, and tomorrow I feel great, and and uh, my mind is clear for writing songs. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like just what other work that needs to be done? I mean, you know, I'm 50 years old. It's it's time, it's time for me to go to work. <laughs> like I've I've just been fucking around for 30 years. <laughs> like it's time to do something for real. I love that perspective. Yeah, yeah, you, you, that clock's ticking, and you only have so much time. And and it is, it's true. It's like okay, um, mm-hmm. oh, shit. And, I, and I think you know, I think now that I'm clear headed, I mean, I uh, like. I mean, my best, I think my best shit is coming out now, yes. you know, like I wish, like it pisses me off so much that I wasted that much of my life, you know, just but you being have a lot a, of memories. So you gotta, you gotta give them. And <laughs> do I? Remember, you don't remember it. I mean, I remember <laughs> having fun. There you I go. I don't, I don't remember specific memories. I, Was, but along yeah. with having fun, I also remember uh, almost every day on tour waking up and wanting to fucking die. Like, take me to the hospital. I can't even get out of bed, you know. Yeah, and I, so and I somehow, to breathe. yeah, and I somehow, <laughs> you know, like you can't even talk to people. Like you're just fucking shaking. Uh, Oh my God! Somehow, like yeah. I had made it to the show that night, and you just get fucking drunk and you do it again, and it <laughs> and it's a vicious cycle. I've I've been there, but I've I've always <clears throat> pulled myself back from having to quit altogether. I've always been like, okay, the the hangovers are actually bad enough to where I'm gonna chill. Like, and so, mm-hmm. so I still yeah, drink, yeah, yeah. but but I hear you. You know, um, you know. I feel for you because I feel the same way. Like when you, when you sit down and have a joint, 
if if it hits you because weed can hit people in different ways you know where that freaks mm-hmm. them out or they just can't handle it or whatever but if it's good for you then it's good for you and, and it sounds like it's really good for you so what's your day-to-day yeah. like um what do you what do you do on a typical day that you're not d- thinking about well you could be music if it's every day but i just love to kind of hear what's mundane for you you know i mean what's what's every day for you on average because that's what people never talk about because it's kind of boring but i think it's fascinating because we're all living similar lives out here you know all of us even if you're not an artist you're you're Mm -hmm. having to pay bills you're having to go to work you're tired at the end of the day but for sure um we can make or no (laughs) sometimes uh D- depends depends on what's coming up in the day uh, like right. if i'm if i'm just chilling at the house absolutely uh which is most days um like i like i about six months ago i i quit my job like i was working at a screen printing shop in town i'd been doing it here for four years uh a few years ago we moved to bloomington indiana i don't know if if i told you that no, no, I don't no. know if you knew that. I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to assume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like four, four and a half, five years ago, we moved to Bloomington. I got a job in a screen printing shop here, and I've been doing it uh, the whole time. So about six months ago, uh, I finally quit working. Uh, I was like, 100% of my time is going in to making this band work. Right. This right. is my this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. Right. <clears throat> Good call, I think. You're yeah, 50. I had You're to. You're 50. You have to. Come on. <laughs> I'm 50. I had to. <laughs> Plus, and the new know. song, Red, is amazing. So you were saying you're writing your best stuff right now. Like, whatever part you had in that, bravo. It's a great, you know, it's a great Thank comeback you. track. Wait till you hear the rest of the record. Brad, when does the record come out? Do you have a date yet? Or is it still in the works? You're still working on everything? Um... We're releasing the next single called Choke, uh, May 10th. So what's that, like a That'll week from like, yeah, today? Yeah, about when this comes out. This yeah, like out. next Tuesday, I think. Yeah, this will come out Monday. So the Monday, so the okay. ninth, ninth, eighth or ninth or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh comes out next Tuesday, I believe. Okay, excellent. Uh, Perfect. So there, we ha- there's a an EP coming out June 10th. Uh, our... What we're do- what we're doing uh, we're we're releasing two digital EPs this year that will be released on a vi- on vinyl. Okay. As as a as a complete record. Okay, so two digital EPs and then <clears throat> on vinyl as a complete record. Yes. And then that will be that's the record. And that will be the record. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. But the EPs will only be digital. It's a little uh, different strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Trying something. But the first one comes out June tenth. Um, awesome. Anyway, so I wake up now that I don't have a job. Uh, I live in the woods. We have three acres. Beautiful. Uh, a lot of trees and shit. Uh, so what unfortunately, kind of you got out there. Any uh, deer, rabbits. Deer. Okay. Yeah, uh, I see deer every day. Uh, just hanging right outside the window here. If I see any, I'll turn the camera and we'll take a look. Nice. All right. Um, <laughs> but you know, possum, raccoon, all over the deck and stuff. Oh yeah, we have uh, possums everywhere here. Yeah, we have them yeah, under yeah. our deck, and we like started feeding them because there were little babies in there. Ooh, nice. They'll leave eventually, I'm sure. But <laughs> so far, we'll, so good. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're, fe- uh, we're not feeding them all the time. Just at, every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like anyway, uh there's actually like a lot of shit here i have to do a lot of yard yeah. work a lot of picking up branches a lot of mowing and stuff uh so like i i pretty much work outside like every day and uh you know i, I just put in my earbuds and uh listen to like yes or something and listen get to high yes. <laughs> yeah nice mow the yard or you know is that your yeah. favorite band yes <clears throat> or is it just uh, you're on a yes kick right now? They're one of my favorite bands. Uh, right you know, I mean, it probably happens to you. Like, you go throughout your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, like, different periods yeah. where you're going to, where there's different shit you're going to like. 
Uh, but the last many years, uh, and yes, uh, Jethro Tull, uh, some of the early Genesis I really like with nice. Peter Gabriel. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, That's going to make they, a comeback, I think, actually, the early Genesis stuff. I don't know. I think because a lot of these kids are playing this like synthy pop music, but they're in the punk scene slightly, and it's weird to me, but it's like, okay, I get it. You have a bedroom and a piano or something, you know? Right. So I think, I think honestly, like, yeah, these, these old style bands are like going to get popular. <laughs> I mean, they should. There, I, there, there yeah. is a lot of like surprisingly oddball stuff that, these kids like these days yes, yes. that that like we can appreciate as well mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. uh and and that that it surprises me all the time it's like like i just you know you listen to the radio and shit it's like you know our parents do the same thing like what the fuck are these kids listening to yes like <laughs> what what is this this isn't even music this is terrible yeah. yeah like so normally i'm like that it's like fucking kids these days uh but <laughs> but you now realize I'm it's like... a cycle it's a cycle that everybody's <laughs> kind of going through yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, you know, I'll hear stuff. It's like, wow, that is like trippy and really cool and beautiful. And then it might be something you've never even heard the name of, but you find out they've sold like five million records. Yeah. And it's like, well, who likes this? The kids do. It's like, <laughs> kids? Are you kidding? The bot. But... The bots do. <laughs> Somebody does. Somebody yeah. does. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. My 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 favorite. <clears throat> thing that i can think of to listen to when i was mowing the lawn as a kid uh i got into the cult electric or is it electric mm -hmm. ocean whatever that electric is. electric uh <clears throat> just, da, 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 just fucking rocking out just Love mowing it. the lawn you know and of course i and Love i got it. into punk and and stuff after that that was probably early early junior high like seventh grade and then and then i got started getting into actual punk i would say mid mid uh junior high eighth, mm -hmm. eighth ninth grade anyway right. um what else what else are you into besides yes what 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 are you what are some of your like things that got you into like songwriting like where songwriting makes sense because everybody kind of has like their style of songwriting where i listen to like all and i'm like i don't know how the hell they write those songs like it's just insane to me but then i mm -hmm. can write an mxpx song because it's well i'm writing them Right, so anyway, right. so like, who 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 kind of like inspired you to come up with some of your songwriting processes? <clears throat> uh, I mean, initially it was like uh, I had always heard like kind of fifties, you know, kind of pop music growing up, Do uh, kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, soul, yeah, Motown. Yeah, all that, but uh, probably more toward the like pop side you know like buddy holly uh maybe that kind of stuff Love um that. yeah so so i mean i was from a kid i mean maybe we're all maybe you're just kind of born uh with the sense of melody i guess uh there's a reason we not everyone <laughs> well yeah <laughs> but there's a reason there's a thing that we that is we call pop music Yes. You know, it's very pleasing to your ears. Uh, so, I mean, like, like right out of the gate, I mean, I just listen to that stuff in like, you know, just pop melody, just like nice, happy melodies. Like that's kind of where I started. Uh, but I mean, really, it was like the Beatles, you know, yeah. like you hear stuff. I mean, as a kid, that's pretty that's very out there. I mean, even as songwriters now, like in my 50s. Like, you know, some of that stuff is just like, wow, like, um, I don't even understand why they did that, but, you know, it works. Um, Absolutely, yeah. But, like, other than the Beatles, I mean, you know, um, it's like when I started listening to, like, metal and stuff, obviously that came into it. Like, I love Dio and Wasp. Okay, and, I was uh, just going to say, how do you get from, you know, uh, 50s stuff, you know, and being influenced by that and pop to what a vulture wake is doing, which is very melodic, very catchy, sometimes skate punk sounding, and then sometimes 
could have been Dio. Wait, is that Dio? You know, it could have been. And then, you know, with the pr- the Prague stuff, uh, some time signatures get crazy. Mm-hmm. So, um, how do you get there? And I guess metal is, is kind of the answer. Cause, metal, yeah. yeah. And um, it's like, uh, I mean, Vulture Wake is the first time, is the first band that has been, like, although, like, the first record, like, uh, I think all of that music Brandon had already written. Uh, so I just wrote all the, all the lyrics and melodies for, uh, this next record was more like half and half, mm. but, uh, it's like this, this band is like the first time I feel like it's my band. You know what I mean? Like I can, you know, I mean, in all like those three other dudes, you know, everybody's writing and it's like, uh, you know, like all the, even though it it's might a writer's sound, room where you, you, the best song wins basically. Yeah. 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 So you're not, you're just kind of writing songs. You're not necessarily right. Like writing what you, I'm, I'm not really explaining this right. But. Are you saying that like you write a song that's okay, here's a good song that could be an all song, but then with Vulture Wake, you can write, okay, here's a bunch of songs that fit together that we can craft into an album or an EP or collect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this and this and it's more like like my vision, you know? I mean, all mm-hmm. was like I mean, all was an established band. They were already, they already had records out and shit. I mean, Descendants, all it's like, totally there's there. a thing there. Yeah. Uh, you bring in the, a 21 year old kid, you know, <laughs> who's like barely even left Kansas City his life. He, I didn't know shit. Um, you know, it's like, <clears throat> it's very intimidating, like trying to hand a song to somebody who wrote like "She's My Ex" or "Bubblegum," and you know what I mean. It's like these are just amazing songs like why the fuck would you want to hear my song yeah but it's like now it's like i i know what i want stuff to i know what i like i know what i want stuff to sound like uh i know what i want to say yeah and and i can do exactly what i want to do and uh you know uh, and drag like was more so like that but you, but there was still another songwriter, so like you're kind of balancing songs, you know. Damn you, John Snodgrass! God damn Just... it! <laughs> uh, now we worked because you know, I mean, it's two oh, we're it. two very different people. Absolutely, very different people, <laughs> very different voices, very different songs. Yeah, it, it was cool. I love it. I love both of your your songs, both the songs that you guys write. Um, how? What? So, what's it like writing? And I've written some lyrics to a song but not not very often so do you i guess talk about the difference between just writing to a song as opposed to writing the whole song it's tough it's difficult um you're kind of mm. locked in you difficult the first thing like uh writing to somebody else's song that they're brought yes. to you that because you're yes. locked into a certain thing kind of right yes yeah yeah um like i did i had to do i did it a couple times with all uh, because like Stefan never wrote um, lyrics and shit. Like he would just always give us music. Uh, so, so like every you know album cycle, we would have you know probably six, seven like uh, just songs by Stefan uh, that were just instrumental. Uh, so that's when I like tried to start doing that, and uh. I mean, there were a handful of songs where, like, me and Bill or whoever uh, kind of, you know, came up with lyrics to a song. But I never actually kind of took somebody's song and wrote the whole thing. It was just, it seemed very difficult to me. Um, yeah. And so let me <clears throat> ask you, is it even with Vulture Wake or with all, when they bring a song instrumental that you're like, hey, we need lyrics, do they send you a produced version of the song or a demo produced version of the song, or is it just acoustic guitar, here's the melody, or maybe no melody, here's just the, the instrument guitar part? Like, what's, uh, the, what's the level of, of production you get? Uh, no melody. <clears throat> so it's just um, music, okay. Usually, well, I mean, I don't even remember back in the all days. <laughs> that was a long time ago. 
But now, you know, it's just like kind of crappy uh, garage band demos, you know, fake drums okay. and stuff. Uh, mainly just to hear the the guitar parts, you know. Yeah. Um. So, but anyway, so when um when Brandon a few handful of years ago asked me about a vulture wig, uh, I was like, let's see, man. Uh, like I was interested in doing something else. Uh, like all had long since been touring, you know. That that it was years since we had done anything uh drag had been playing a lot and uh you know i don't want to say i was burnt out on that but you know i wanted you know i didn't want to just play acoustic guitar and shit you know like i wanted to rock again so yeah. i was very interested in the vulture wig or you know that project uh so brandon sent me a bunch of music and and I was just like, oh shit! <laughs> like, <laughs> that, can I even do this? Uh, so, so are you, you know, playing guitar in the band, or are you just singing? I'm playing playing guitar too. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can imagine. Yeah, I'm just going, oh god. <laughs> so it's like, I wasn't even sure that I could do it. I mean, and you know, you can scribble down lyrics to and make a song out of almost anything. But like for like a whole record, you know, like writing like 10 or 12 songs that way, I wasn't sure that I could do it. Uh, and it probably took a couple of weeks of me just listening to all these demos and stuff. And uh, as soon like I just picked one, focused on it, uh, shit started coming out. Uh, as soon as I got one down, I was like, okay, it can, it can be done. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> I just did it. Uh, uh, maybe a half-assed version of it. It's gonna get better from here on out. But uh, and that is what happened. You know, the first like the first song. I won't. I won't even. I don't remember what what song it was. But you know, like it's not the best song on the record. Uh, but once once I got in into the groove of like just finding uh, the melody and like some like what somebody else has given me. Yeah. Uh, then I don't know, you know, it just kind of, it just started working. Let me ask you something. Does Bill like say if he's pr producing an all record, does Bill ever ask you to change any lyrics or any of the other guys like, Hey, change this lyric or, you know, come up with a better line here. This is kind of cheesy or has that ever happened? It probably has, but not really. Not too much. Um, yeah, you guys it's are just uh, perfect. For <laughs> yeah, everybody, we we just we just come in and the songs are one hundred percent complete when we hand them to the other guys. All right, my next question is, what's your vocal like? How do you record vocals, um, either in the past or these days? Do you do a bunch of takes and then comp them together, or you try to do? Uh, do you record in sections, or you do it all the way through, like? I'm sure you've done it all of those ways, but what what do you like to do? Let's say that. How do you um, do What do I like to do? Uh, I like to sing the whole song, uh, you know, like four or five times in a row, uh, and then listen through to everyone, uh, and then by then, you know, you're you're warmed up, like you know what you're doing. Uh, like your voice is either feeling good and you're ready to roll or it's not and you got to call it but uh and then i can just start picking out like problem spots it's like well it, it's fucked up every single time right there mm -hmm. right there uh and i knew it was <laughs> yeah i i knew when i was doing it all five times that that was gonna suck i knew it uh you know and then Go back, do it all again, all the way through, you know, two or three times with focus on these certain parts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, really, I, I don't really care, like, uh, like what, I mean, it's the final, you know, it's the final outcome that really matters. But, uh, you know, if... I go. I, I make sure there's like at least two or three full takes that I think is passable. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and then whoever whoever's engineering or whatever, uh, 
they can splice and put shit together all they want to, uh, as long as I can't hear it, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, shit sounds better to me. It probably doesn't to anyone else. But if if you know you sing like the whole verse in one take, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's like a there's a momentum to it uh, that Absolutely. probably only you will know. <laughs> I've heard modern like modern songs on the radio where I hear the punch and I hear splices and I'm like what and and like rap like rap songs and stuff where you hear the like the rap gets spliced in. Like they don't even care. Like that's part of they the sound, I guess. Right? They don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's like let's just use everything as part of the sound. It's like these nihilistic. this vocal, these vocal effects and shit. Yeah. Let's just use it as the sound. Yeah. It, it's supposed to be like that. So where do you, where have you been recording lately? Do you have a, a vocal setup at your place, at your house, or do you go to a studio for a vulture wave for this new stuff? Uh, this new record we recorded. Uh, in Oklahoma City. Um, OKC. Do you, OKC. Do you know Mike Kennerty? I do. We recorded at his house. He's awesome. He is awesome. That's right. I had him on the podcast um, a while back, and he mentioned A Vulture Wake, and he was mm-hmm. just finishing that up or working on that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small world, smaller. For you people that don't know who Mike Kennerty is, he's the guitar player in the... Uh, all American rejects. That's right. Swing, swing. So yeah, they got a lot of hits. Great they band. They do. Good band. <laughs> they do. So yeah. So, yeah um, so so okay. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you recorded so, with him. So you stayed down there a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, Dave and John both live there, and they're friends. Oh. They're friends with Mike. Uh, Mike's studio is in his house. He lives there by himself, and it's like a four or five bedroom house uh so me and brandon just stayed in the house you know in his spare bedrooms uh we were there for like two weeks and yeah we just we recorded it all there have you have you ever had any like haunted experiences in a studio or anything on tour or anything because i was thinking about mike all alone sleeping in a studio even though it's a house and think like what if somebody just starts playing (laughs) drums at 4 (laughs) a.m That'd be scary. That would be scary. Be like, <laughs> I have not. No, have nothing's not. ever happened ever on tour or anything. Nothing weird. No, like, that's crazy. I don't think so, no. That's good, I guess. Huh. Yeah, Maybe you're just good. not, like, some people are kind of like, they open themselves up to it and they, and they have experiences a lot. And other people are just like, ah, well, I'm just doing my thing. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of oblivious to a lot of, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff, yeah. <laughs> good times. Oh, my God. Um, so if, okay, so I had a, a, another sort of like technical <clears throat> question about songwriting, like, do you p- also do the, the garage band demos or do you, when you're writing a song, do you write it on an acoustic or a, an electric guitar or whatever and just sing and have a demo? Like what's your, your level of production on a song? Uh, I try to do legit demos in like garage band stuff um does that mean like guitar drums guitar bass and then a vocal maybe a backup mm -hmm. vocal if you get crazy yeah 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 yeah. and how long does that take you ish oh shit it depends (laughs) it depends uh if it's like a real straightforward song and i know like the big problem is the drums Mm -hmm. like you know you can you can pick those you know, the different drummers and whatever that that play different styles. Um, but if you have like, you know, weird time signatures and stuff, it's like, forget it. Yeah. Uh, which I still haven't figured out. So if it's if I'm writing more complicated stuff, it's just guitar and vocals. And send it to the somebody and send it play. yeah, send, send it to somebody, somebody please <laughs> put some drums on this so I <laughs> can tell what it sounds like. So are you just using GarageBand for drums? Yeah. So you can use MIDI stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean... I've never when figured I, it out. When I say, like, full demos, I don't mean good demos. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like, very half-ass, you know, drums and bass. And guitar. Right, 
right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me ex- one for one album. Well, we've done demos for a bunch of albums, but one album in particular we did literally as much recording. Like it could have just been the album because it w- it was for Secret Weapon, which was like two thousand. I don't even know that seven or something like that. But um, we did we did like backup vocals. We did every single little idea we had. So we handed it over to Aaron Sprinkle, who produced it. He was like, um, he was probably pretty happy that he didn't have to do any work. <laughs> Thank God, all right, it's done. He was like, let, he was like, on two songs, he's like, let's cut out this section and this section. We're like, yeah, fair enough. You know, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> did you have to, did you re-record the And then we re-recorded, album? we used the same template and re-recorded everything again. Uh-huh. But with the tracks that we recorded the demos with, so the str- scratch tracks were perfect, like perfectly recorded tracks, right. rather than actual scratch tracks that Yuri was was playing to. So we recorded everything so quickly. So nice. I'd say actually one of the really pros uh, of that is the fact that it was really easy to go turn around and record the actual record then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Like that yeah. Oh yeah. But. We never did that again. We we're like, that's too much work. If we're just gonna, I might as well just record the record. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the crappy Garage Band demo is probably the right amount of time to spend. Do you do you have uh, do you record shit like legitimately? Uh, yeah, sometimes. You yeah. mean like my own stuff or the MXP stuff? Yeah, yeah, like like not garage band, like like yeah, you know yeah. how to you actually record. We have a studio in Bremerton. And, right. Uh, okay. And so yes, I mean full studio. We've done our last couple albums there. Oh, okay. Right. Right. I've done you know with all the tumble down records were done there. I produced there. Oh, um, cool. But but yeah, but when I'm when I'm just songwriting, I don't really spend too much time actually recording. Now mm-hmm. and again, if I have a lot of time, then I'll do like better demos with a click and. But um, I've never really gotten into full, well, not, not never. For the most part, I haven't gotten into full band demos. It's mostly acoustic guitar and my yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I just bring that to practice or I send it to them a couple you know, days ahead of time and they can, because li- they're not going to listen to it until we're in, in the room. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Maybe like Yuri, of course. Will listen, Yuri will listen to it and he knows it, but everybody else is like, ah, just. Those lazy son of a bitches. <sighs> no, I. I I don't want to throw. I'm actually talking about one person in my band, and uh, you can guess between Tom or Chris. And uh, most people listening right now probably know which one I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, yeah, I think uh, I think I catch myself like when I'm spending too much time on something that won't actually be used or won't actually matter, or I don't, or even like make a difference, right? So like. That's kind of cryptic, but uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. but no, it's, not, I it's, it's not. I wanted to say something that doesn't make money, but like literally, almost everything I do doesn't make money. Like this podcast, you know, I stopped doing ads for it because I was just tired of talking about somebody else's product on my podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I want to be talking about music or my band. If I'm if I'm going to advertise something, I want it to be MXPX or you know, right. I have I have friends and other you know I- even first time acquaintances on the show, and we talk about their band and. The audience can can check that out. Hopefully, hopefully not for the first time. But a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, I checked that out for the first time because of the podcast." Mm-hmm. Small differences, but there are things that I catch myself doing where it's just I've just wasted an hour doing nothing, like making this stupid video, meme video that nobody, you know, five people are gonna like or whatever. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when you say it's time to get to work. Um, it also matters what the work is, you know, and and, you know, hearing hearing these tracks with the Vulture Wake, you know, what do you do? What do you do when you feel like it's you? It's hard to gain traction on something. Do you do you keep going or do you try different things? It could be with marketing. It could be with songwriting. It could be with, you know, even just getting on the same page with band members. It's all it's all part of it, right? Mm hmm. What's the best it approach? Is. I know it's a weird question. Uh, I'm not sure how it's to tough. answer it. <laughs> it's tough, man. Um, like, how often do you talk to your band guys? Like, is there um, is it just like randomly like t- group text or or do you guys get on the phone? 
Uh, usually group text, unless uh, it's something of of note. Of note. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like going on tour or whatever. Um, but um, I mean, you know, it's it's very easy to get stuck uh, in a hole. How Luckily, you, I was gonna say, how do you practice? Like, say, if you're gonna be going on tour when the other guys live in Oklahoma City, do you fly out down there? Or do they fly up? Uh, yes, both. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so we try to, uh, you know, fly. We uh, all meet somewhere, you know, like a couple weeks before tour, uh, and you know, practice for three days. And then, again, like wherever we're leaving from tour, we will try to go there like two days before and practice again. So uh, it's not ideal. Like it's not – I like to practice every day. Like when I was in all, uh, I mean, we practiced six days a week for like like four, four hours a day, you know? And For how many weeks? Every, every day. Always? Always. That's insane, dude. Like, I don't know anybody that's practiced that. <laughs> like, and maybe I Dream loved Theater. It. Does Dream Theater practice that much? Probably not. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. They don't practice. Jump all those jump. nerds just practice on their own and then show up, and it's fucking perfect. Yeah. And but you guys, uh, well, it, what's you guys don't play with a click or anything. It's always just on feel. Like uh, that's partly what I love about Bill Stevens and playing. You know, Bill's playing is he's like, you guys follow that. Dun, dun, you know, and it's just, mm-hmm. I, I definitely have taken that with us, you know, with, you know, when MXPX plays, it's just play on feel and sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast and um, practice. That's probably what, what makes that work. But okay, so, it helps. <laughs> so how is it that like, the, so there's obviously like with Goldfinger, I play with Goldfinger too, I'm the bass player. Right. And we don't practice much either. Like we, Sometimes we'll just show up at the show and play. And we'll kind of go over the thing, like the set, either at a sound check or at like in the dressing room or in the hotel. I hate it. I it hate it terrible. so much. But every now and again, we'll all fly down to L.A. and practice like mm-hmm. one day before and then fly out to wherever we're going. But that's hard. So really, you're kind of getting your practice the first couple days of tour, right? Yeah. Uh, like... I mean, Drag the River was always that way, and I fucking <laughs> hated it. It's like we would suck for a week, you know? And then it's like, and oh, man. could stop you. And then it's like, oh, yeah, this is killer. But what about the fucking thousand people who saw us suck for a week? I don't want to do that. I want to kick ass the first night. Yeah, yeah. It's you almost know? impossible. I mean, there's really... There's really no unless you're a drummer because dr- drumming's kind of similar in practice, but everything else is just I don't know. I don't take it. I take it seriously, but you just can't get the same movements, especially if you're a heavier True. band and you're you've got an audience that has a mosh pit. Um, you're moving around a little bit, and that to me, there's no substitute for actually playing a show. So yeah, maybe, and, and it's too expensive, right? You can't you can't try to like waste a show on practice because it's it's expensive to be out on the road. So it's a mm-hmm. catch 22. I don't know how you guys do it, but you just kind of make do, right? I don't either. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, I mean, we're all, you know, we're all in the same boat, really. As long as you got a bag on you, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you're good. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So didn't you guys just finish a, a little run or you were on tour you, you when I hit you up? Or you were out of town or something? You're like, I'll hit you back up. I'm, I'm out of town. Oh. Um, we were trying. To, oh, 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 yeah. Okay, dig this. <laughs> that was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Brandon, our guitar player, uh, he quit. Uh, so, <laughs> after, writing wow. these, after writing these songs and shit uh, for two years, you know, being stuck in our houses yeah. uh mailing shit back and forth uh you know and then recording at mike's house 
Uh, so then after the record's done, uh, Brandon dis decided to quit. So. <laughs> kick in the stomach, man. Like, no what? shit. No shit. It's, so, especially after, <laughs> you know, after having to get rid of Joe and Sean. Yeah. You know, because we couldn't tour. And then getting slammed by COVID. And then we record our record. And it's like, everybody's stuck. And then Brandon quits. <laughs> it's like, fuck, okay. So what else could go wrong? Uh, so to answer your question, uh, a couple weeks ago, you hit me up. Uh, we were trying out a guitar player uh, in OKC. Wow. Insane. Uh, Insane. Yeah. And we have, a, we have a tour coming up, you know, in a month. So did you get a new guitar player yet? We have somebody. We have somebody filling in. Okay. 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 For the time being. <laughs> Dang, that is insane. So it truly is your band now. Like it's your band, and you're. I guess the show. so. I guess yeah. so. Which, I mean, I don't want to be that dude. Like I like bands to be a band. Of course. Uh, like I don't want to tell the bass player what to play. Well, no, 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 no. no. Uh, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant like. You're kind of you're the you're the the original the only original, original guy. Yeah, you're the only original sure. guy, and all for well, I assume good reasons. Uh, I don't know why Brandon quit, but probably because he couldn't handle the, the everything he just went through the last couple of years. I mean, a lot of people are cracking up quite a bit. Certainly. Um, well, whatever. We'll leave that for, for, between you guys. But uh, yeah, I I uh, that's just it's something that you kind of just have to realize is part of life and everything's going to keep coming. Obstacles are going to keep coming in, in your way. They like are. The band's called a vulture wake. So you might as well live up to your name. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. It's like, um, I mean, we picked like one of the worst career paths you could possibly decide <laughs> to get, Maybe to take. if you want a lot of money, but I mean, if you want to be control in control of your life, however that may be, it's kind of one of the best career paths. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I see so many bands out there, and maybe this is the social media thing where they act like they're happy, but bands that are small, bands that are can't possibly be making a good living doing music, but they love what they're doing, and maybe they sure. have side jobs or, or whatever, but like, to me, I always just try to think of like, wait, you know, I've been able to do this, you know, 30 years and uh, still doing it, you know, and mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that. And, and yeah. the fact that I don't have to go into an office and put on a tie and and yeah, I always say, you know, sure, that's for some people are, are down and, and making money and paying bills for their family, which is absolutely awesome, you know. But for mm -hmm. me, like, I'd almost rather work at Taco Bell than work at a place where I had to wear a suit, you know? And I love wearing suits when I have to, when I choose to wear a suit. You choose to. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, On your own terms. Like with Goldfinger or something. Like, sure, I'll wear a suit for that, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but if I don't want to, I just don't wear a suit. You know, it's like, sorry, John, I didn't bring my suit. Here's my yeah. cutoff shirt, you know? And I'm not going to get fired for that. So I guess that's just my little, my little sort of, yeah, it's easy for you to say, but I work to, I always say I'd rather work 24 seven, make less money than work nine to five. And I guess it depends on how much money we're talking, but, and make a nice living, you know, because that what you give up, what you sacrifice. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've never had what I have, you just maybe you don't know or if you never had what you had, you know, if, if you never mm -hmm. had that. Right. Like you could be maybe content screen printing for the rest sure. of your life, you know. Sure. Um, and there's nothing wrong. I love screen printers. I, I'm friends with a lot of them and they, I can't do what they do. Let's let's put it that way. But but, you know, it's like. But it, it depends on what's in here. If you're like, no, I need to be doing a vulture wake more and so mm -hmm. go and do that. Not a lot of people have the. I don't even, I guess you could call it luxury, even though that's probably not the right word. The privilege. 
Yeah. You're doing something right. Yeah. You're, you're sitting here on a Tuesday in the afternoon when you're not at a, at a job. You know what I mean? Like, Am I? I think so. You're you're living, you're breathing, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're you're smoking, true. you're you're, right, you're, you're smiling. Right. True, true. Yeah, yeah, um I mean what I mean if you play music and you enjoy playing music, I mean once you've been at once you've played in front of people and gotten that kind of feedback, I mean there's nothing fucking better than that. Nothing, you know, uh, I mean, some people, you know, might get older and it's like, OK, that was great. You know, that was a great time in my life. Uh, now I'm going to go get a job. Some people can do that. And that's that's cool. Yeah. Uh, me, it's like, uh, -uh. there is one thing I love to do. There's one thing I'm good at and I have to do, it, you know, mm -hmm. I always think to myself. Okay, I'm. I think I'm gonna just do some form of music and being an artist for the rest of my life. And if I can pull that off, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna start laughing my ass off, you know, when I go into the grave because I literally spent my whole life after I got, you know, when I started started work my work life, it was uh, landscaping and washing dishes and busting tables and and that kind of stuff, and. I never, once I started doing music, I never went back. You know, it was always just music. And sometimes you're poor, sometimes you're rich. It goes mm -hmm. back and forth. And uh, yeah, if I can make it to the end without actually going to Taco Bell and asking for a, an application. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's insane, dude. Uh, it's insane. Yeah. So now we're lucky. We are, we're lucky. Yeah, we are. So thank you, everybody that, that listens to all our music. Make sure you, you do solo stuff too. Do you have solo records out or like Chad Price solo records or? I do. I do. I have two. Yes. That's kind of, uh, that's, that's kind of nice to, to be able to have a band and do solo stuff. Yeah. Um, like the first one I put out on a uh, suburban home records. I, I don't know if you remember those guys from yeah. Denver years ago, but, uh, and I don't even know how long that ago that was, but, uh, the second one I put out was with Joey mm. on uh, the one week records. Uh, I did not record at his house. I don't know if you know the the one week. Yes, I do you, know. You go to his house and record a record in a week and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So I didn't do that. Uh, I recorded it in Denver with Chris Fogel. Uh, and he's, you know, he's buddies with Joey and all those guys. So, But still so, in one week? <laughs> still in one week yeah, yeah. yeah. okay you're like yeah, maybe yeah. less maybe less probably and and i think it might be the only the only record on that label that's like full band too so that's it's awesome. kind of a it's kind of an oddball record on there where but, can uh, i hear it where can i hear it you can buy it mm -hmm. or it's not digital Oh, I, oh no! That their shit's on Spotify now. Yeah. Oh, is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah. It used to just be through you had to be a member of One Week Records. Okay. Uh, but I don't. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that. I think it's all on digit on Spotify and shit awesome. now. Awesome. Yeah. So. Good. That should be. Make sure you put all anything of Vulture Wake is released. Get make sure it's all up on all the digitals. Yeah. Not, not yeah, just yeah. Spotify. It's a big world out there. Not everybody. Has <laughs> right. I have Spotify and I have Apple right. Music, and I, I listen to Apple Music more than Spotify, yeah. um, just personally. But but uh, I'm, I'm kind of like you, where I do listen to the same things over and over, and then I'll get reminded of something, and I'll oh, and I'll listen to that, you know. So it's just yeah. like I'm like a, a you know, a right. toddler running around. <laughs> right. I use. Uh... I use the term Spotify as like a general, general term, like Kleenex, like, like Coke, Coke, you know, Kleenex, yes. Coke, Coke can be a Pepsi, Coke can, or Coke can be a Sprite, you know, like Coke, like pop. That's, that's a Southern thing. Like my wife's from Texas and she would always call everything Coke. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, Even right, Dr. Right. Pepper is a Coke. Yeah. Everything's Coke. Right. That's a brand name. That's a certain type, but okay. I get you. <laughs> and Kleenex, oh come on, there it, it, it can't even be a brand name. 
It is. It is. They're all Kleenex. It's it's tissue. It's like <laughs> facial tissue is the real th- name for it, or Scotch tape. Like Scotch tape is, is a, believe it. a word for clear tape, but it's a brand. Scotch is the brand. Scotch. What about duck? Duck. D- duck. Duck tape. There's there's a brand. <laughs> there's a br- um, there's a brand called duct tape, but it's actually ducked with a T, right? Duct is the actual term. Yeah. But duck. Is a, is a brand of duct tape. Yes. <laughs> so that's a tricky one. That's like that's like a a, a, van, a company that sells vans, but is called shoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I do. That's I like it. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sell. <laughs> Guys, I got a great idea. We're gonna sell shoes, but it's called vans. <laughs> I mean, how was how hard was that to? get everybody on board with right right <laughs> <laughs> um sorry random okay. random thoughts i was gonna ask something i'll, I'll go ahead i'll ask after the cameras are off okay uh <laughs> let's let's we can wrap it up real quick i wanted to ask you a couple more things uh one are you a reader books mm, used to be quite a bit but not Even though I have all the time in the world, I feel like I don't have time to, you just know. He- just headlines these days, right? <laughs> you pretty much, yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. corduroy pants. Um, <laughs> sorry, he's dumb. Uh, corduroy pillows, actually, I guess you could say. Um, okay, yeah, I've just been trying to get back into reading, and I felt, I feel like, and and I don't, I don't know if this is a fact, but I feel like when I read, I write better lyrics. Makes sense. Probably just because, you know, sentences open up more and like a new word, like, oh, I forgot about that word. Same thing with music. I forgot about that band. Mm-hmm. I'm going to check them out or whatever. Teenage Fan Club, you ever he- hear them? Mm-hmm. Huge fan of them. And I just saw yep. a video of them earlier today. My friend posted, and I was just like, oh, my God, they're so good. I used to just jam Teenage Fan Club probably around the same time I was jamming all because I had their cassette. Um, and... uh so it just brings me back instantly to like certain things, certain times in my life, and all and descendants are always gonna to do that. And I think Drag the River is gonna do that. And I think also, you know, with with the Vulture Wake now, whatever you do, and people come see you guys play, and they experience your albums, that's gonna just start a new generation and a new era of new memories. Mm-hmm. You can't help it. I mean, and I think that's probably one of the coolest parts about being an artist and about writing songs is knowing that the same thing that happens to you when you listen to Yes, when you're doing yard work, happens to people when they're listening to your music. I love it. Yeah. It like gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. I mean, the way I feel when I listen to shit, knowing that there's at least one person out there that feels that way when they listen to my shit, that means a lot. You know? Yeah. You, you cannot take that lightly. Well, thank you, everybody. Dude, uh, is there anything else you wanted to say before we, we end it? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, when are you guys going to go on tour, and will you take us? <laughs> we will definitely. <laughs> we will definitely <laughs> would love to play with you guys, yes. Um, <laughs> we have a bunch of stuff planned for not the near future, but, um, yeah, we will. We're working on new stuff. We're working on a new album, and we're not done with it yet. So um, once that's done, we'll start playing more shows and would love to play with the Vulture Wake. So cool, I'll, hit you up. I'll hit you up on that. Um, where can people find like on, you guys on socials? What's the best spot or, or multiples? Uh, wherever. We're on all that shit. Uh, website is the Vulture Wake dot com. And uh, from there, it all it's all a variation yeah. of that. Yeah, we're on, we're on all that shit. And then so you personally, Chad Price. What do you do? I'm I do it all. I do all that shit too. I'm I'm everywhere. I got not I not that I want to be, but you know I think you have to be uh, when you're trying to get word out uh, about things like this. You know about touring and shows. Uh, It's it's kind of the it's you know it's the only way to do it. No, we're not we're not walking around nailing up flyers on telephone poles. You know that's this is it. Although you know you could do that as well. Wouldn't hurt. You can do that as well. <laughs> Got to get a street team back together, right? 
You remember those days. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I remember those days. Thank you. Chad Price, everyone. Check out uh, A Vulture Wake. The new record's coming out. New single's already out, Red. And uh, all this, all the music, you know, whatever you can get your hands on. But it's best to get it on vinyl if you can find it. There's uh, a lot of good stuff out there, but always hard to find on vinyl. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for doing it. Appreciate it, Chad. Yeah. Thank you, Mac. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Zip, 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 zip.